Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our little lunch break live. Today we have Tamara Bellotti. She is from uh, Dancing Creek Farm in Virginia. Tamara, what part of Virginia were you from again? West of Danville. So we're basically real close to the North Carolina border. Okay. So it's we're in the middle of the state, real south in Southern Virginia. So she's going to share a little bit of her story here with Dancing Creek Farm and how that led into uh, her passion of nutrition with dogs. And of course, in the dog training world, nutrition also plays a key part and a key role in dogs uh, behavior as well. Mm -hmm. And she's going to give us uh, three ways to help you make your dog healthier, which I think we all <laughs> we all need. We all want and we all want to hear, uh, you know, ways that we can do that and help our dogs live a little bit longer, too. So, Tamara, tell us about Dancing Creek Farm, how that was created, what it is. Tell our listeners and uh, just let them know what you're doing down there. We started Dancing Creek Farm in 2005. Uh, we started with just actually two cabins and boarding in my house. Um, it started off me helping people, military deployed, offering long-term boarding. Hmm. And that that just grew. I mean, word of mouth and online, it just grew. So we offered an affordable long-term boarding solution discounted for military deployed. We then realized that people that were in all kinds of transitions, whether it was domestic violence, um, moving, remodeling their house, going on extended trips, business trips, whatever. So our typical boarding could be anywhere from six months to two years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's it's pretty incredible. So like I said, we started off with military deployed and, and then more and more people needed long-term boarding. And a traditional boarding facility is really not great for a dog for an extended period of time. Right, correct. You know, as you know, we have 30 acres, we have cabins, we have a unique style of boarding that allows the dogs to freely go in and out. They have their own, <laughs> I'm dinging here. They have their own, um, each cabin has its own yard. We're a pack style boarding facility. In doing long-term boarding, of course, we have to take care of every level of health. Yeah. We didn't get into training until much later. Uh, so for the first six years, it was just extended boarding long term. And that's how that's how I got into nutrition was I had to make selections on food and to be able to provide every level of care for these dogs and have them healthy while they're in my facility. Yeah. So you can imagine that you're deployed, you already have stress, you're moving, just things are going on. The last thing you want to worry about is the welfare of your pet. You want to be able to see pictures and videos of them. For sure. Healthy, happy, uh, running around. And if you look at our reviews, we consistently have reviews saying how much healthier their dogs were when they picked them up. Hmm. And that was finding solutions that were affordable for the owners to pay for food, adding supplements, enrichment, and of course, ultimately training. That's that's the start of it. <laughs> um, I have to I have to say, you know, when we do a board and train here, and a dog is here for two or three weeks, and then you see the greeting afterwards when the dog sees the owner. I can't imagine what it's like seeing the greeting after six months to a year or two years. I mean, I always say it never gets old, right? Because there's just such joy between the owner and the dog. Those greetings for you have to be out of this world, yeah. right? Like, it. We have lots of videos and we always video the reunion. Yeah. And one of people's biggest fears is my dog will forget me. Mm -hmm. But dogs never forget. You know that. Yeah. So we usually bring them out to the pasture. The customer pulls in. The dog kind of looks. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Doesn't know if he should bark or not. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they start walking up. And it takes them a minute. And sometimes they'll walk over. And then they'll walk back to us. Like, what's going on? And it takes them a minute. And then all of a sudden, it's on. 
Yeah. And yes, it's a beautiful thing. A real to see them too, because a lot of tears and yep, a lot of joy. I, I love what what we do. I mean, you know, with the way that we're set up and our popularity, we could easily do upscale boarding, make a lot more money. But you know, we this is what we like to do. This is what we enjoy doing, and it's it's a big need. When you're rolling along with Dancing Creek Farm that said, okay, I think we, we need to, you know, kick this up a level or something. So what what was the, the I guess, the uh, the change for you, the adjustment that said, okay, we, we really have to dig in about nutrition and, and figure this out? I think my own dogs, I feed them. I've always fed them healthy. And I've always been into supplements and herbs and things that are more holistic. When we first started, people would bring their food or have it delivered. And some of the food I was like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I started thinking, I'm going to have this dog for a year. And there's no way that I can continue this. And I could see things. I saw a lot of dogs coming in with uh, health issues. And, of course, I wanted to fix it. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, <clears throat> And so I started researching and I changed my program where the cost would include me making the food selection. Mm. So I started researching, constantly researching, always trying to find better ways to make dogs more healthy. And again, a lot of dogs were coming in with health issues, joint, skin, allergies. Uh, and then later we started recognizing a correlation between nutrition and behavior you know i talked to food companies i researched it and then i came up with things that would work in our facility that were affordable i love raw feeding i have some concerns about it uh because there's so many elements to it yes it's complex yes and so people jumping in and doing raw feeding i think it's great that you care about your dog but can you really meet everything that's involved with that. The other thing is cost. I mean, I have four big dogs, you know, two great Pyrenees, yep. I have, um, a great Dane, <laughs> a boxer. It's a lot of food. Even though I grow my own chickens and pork, there was no way that I could afford to feed my dogs raw. Yeah. So, I started just making food selections and researching food and supplements that would be able to enhance their health, uh, something affordable. And that's what Advanced Holistic does now is it doesn't go towards any one thing. It's every dog is different and they have different nutritional needs. That they are. That That is very <laughs> important for people to understand. It's It's very different for everybody. So even if we choose you know, the same brand of food, we actually use two different brands of food. Even if we do that, we're going to need to supplement that. We're going to need to rotate the proteins to make sure that the dog is, you know, just getting all different types of proteins, which I found to be really essential. Mm -hmm. um, and boredom, you know, dogs get bored. Yes. You know, you know it, it's funny when, when you talk about rotating proteins, I heard somebody say, and it wasn't even a dog thing, uh, podcast or whatever, but somebody said, can you imagine just drinking the same protein shake every meal for six or eight or 10 months at a time? And that put it into perspective. I'm like, what dog wants to do that? That's there's that's boredom. Um, you know, and it's not, also not good for our system. Just having the same exact thing all the time as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have that. And to me, food and is also part of enrichment and, you know, just them being excited about eating their food. Um, and then finding, even though we have the same types of foods that we use for the facility, and we have the same types of supplements that we use on a daily or weekly basis, whether it's certain oils, superfoods, um, ground pumpkin seeds for parasites. I mean, different things that we use for all dogs. 
we have to make adjustments for some dogs that might have different needs. And that includes changing their food. You know, some dog might do better on duck and pear. Others might do better on, you know, a more complex diet. Yep. And some on a more bland diet. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I've been doing this a long time, 17 years. So I've learned a lot and I've learned a lot over the years. You have dogs, you know, I've been able to see this in action. This wasn't something that, I mean, of course I research. I mean, everybody does. Right. But I was able to try different things and my customers trusted me to be able to try different things. Um, and then through that, I learned what worked and what didn't work. And I'm, I'm still learning. I mean, this past year, I've learned so much. And the quality of dog food is changing. I mean, customers are becoming more aware. Mm -hmm. um, they're tired of seeing their dogs die. Yeah. Too young. In the past, I would say the past couple of years, I've noticed we started getting a lot of reactive dogs for board and train. And, you know, I look at them and I can just kind of sense and tell that they're in pain or they have inflammation going on. And I mean, if you don't feel good, you're not going to act right. Correct. If you eat <laughs> junk food, processed food, it's going to decline your health. You're not going to sleep right. I mean, your whole quality of life is going to change. I've noticed this in dogs, definitely. So as soon as a reactive dog comes in the first week, we don't even do training the first week or two. Uh, remember, I have these dogs longer period than most trainers have them. Yeah. So we start with just a really clean diet and just trying to get their health in order. Um, and seeing great results. I mean, just controlling inflammation alone uh, can bring a dog's stress down significantly. When a dog doesn't have pain, he's going to be more comfortable. He's going to sleep better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's going to change behavior. Yeah. So I extended, I stopped even doing two week board and trains because of this and mm -hmm. we start at four weeks and then of course we have our long-term board and train packages and that includes every level of health and getting them healthy losing weight yep. fixing any issues like skin allergy um we have a little dog right now that's in three month board and train and she was rescued from china from the meat market a lot of stress so for over a year this poor little dog has had chronic diarrhea uh, a lot of stress and it's been, she's been there three weeks now. And today I got a perfect poop report. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we all wait for those, right? Those, yes. those kind of reports. <laughs> yes. And we were all so excited over this poop this morning. It was crazy, but imagine how much pain she, I mean, she probably had a lot of different issues going on. So we were able to use the right food, the right supplements, some new things that I've been playing around with the past year. And it worked within two or three weeks, we saw significant changes. That's amazing. Uh, her owner had tried all kinds of food, homemade, raw, just everything. But it took a combination of things to be able to bring this dog's health around and she's doing better every day i have her for mm -hmm. a couple more months <laughs> and you know i have to say this that we've changed dog and owners lives it's awesome uh in just balancing out their health so let's get into the the uh the, the three concepts here then tamara because i'd love to have this kind of segue into what you think is really one of the most important things that a dog owner do can do to make their dog healthier. So what, what what's kind of your go-to number one step? Diet. Finding the right diet for that dog. Yep. And how does somebody, what's the best way somebody can do that? The best way is to talk to somebody like me. <laughs> yes. Or uh, 
you know, I mean, we offer, the group is free. I'm always happy to talk to people. Finding the right diet, having the ability to be able to add some fresh foods, not just only rely on kibble or only rely on raw, but finding the balance with moisture, um, fruits, vegetable, you know, just the right combination of things. Yeah. George. That would be number one is finding the right diet for that dog. And so you you referenced the group here. So I want to make sure, and we're going to mention it probably a few more times too before the end of it. But you have a Facebook group called Advanced Holistic Dog Nutrition. Um, and this is a public group from what I re- recall here, right? Um, so people I, can look this up, look on Facebook, go to the search bar, look up this group, uh, Advanced Holistic Dog Nutrition. Tons of good information. So when you hear us referring to the group, if you will. That's what we're uh, referring to. And there's uh, a lot of people in there that can help. So, um, and and as far as finding the right diet is concerned. It's just not me. I mean, I've invited some of my friends in that Mm -hmm. help guide people. Uh, We post a lot of good information. So after diet, finding the right diet for that dog. And I can't emphasize that enough. Rather it's kibble with added things you know, whatever the right diet is for that dog. And also fits in with the lifestyle of the owner. Like it has to work. If it doesn't work, it won't be consistent. The second thing is the right supplements. Supplements, I mean, no dog food is complete. That's a fact. Uh, Anytime you process something, you're losing vital nutrients. Yes. So the right supplements, those could be anywhere from superfoods to certain oils, um, whole foods that are concentrated because you don't have access to give your dog broccoli every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, just, the, I mean, there's supplements that address general health, but also specific needs, whether it's joints, allergies, the third thing would be enrichment, exercise and enrichment. I'm kind of grouping those two together because for me, exercise and enrichment are synonymous. Yeah, they definitely go together. Yes. Making sure the dog gets out for exercise every day. I mean, even if it's just for a little while. I mean, at the farm, we ha- take dogs out um, for hard runs three times a week doesn't mean that they don't get out and walk and do things right at least three times a week hard runs in the pasture now this isn't possible for everyone to do especially people that live in apartments or whatever so uh, that's a little bit tricky but getting out for extended walks at a fast pace even if you have to hire a dog walker exercise is important it also is enriching but to add on to that would be um, massage, mm-hmm. you know, little games, uh, just bonding with your with your pet, uh, brushing. We use a rubber brush. It's mostly like massage. We do like a little mm-hmm. circular thing, and this enhances their skin, their digestive system. I mean, it just covers so much. And really important. But I so, that okay. <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about the right supplements, I, I know when, when you refer to finding the right diet for your dog, now you got to find the right supplements too. Uh, and I'm sure that's different for each dog as well, correct? The number one thing that I've learned in the past year and a half maybe is oxidative stress. Humans go through this dogs especially go through this because you know vaccines they're always being vaccinated sometimes over vaccinated uh flea and tick preventative big one it creates so much stress on their bodies it creates digestive issues organ issues pharmaceuticals anytime a dog gets sick they want to give them antibiotics and even though they might help the situation temporarily yeah, the symptoms because it is temporary. It's creating uh, problems with gut health and that gut health 
is responsible for so many dog illnesses. Like it's not even funny. So oxidative stress is a big one. We've been using supplements to be able to help correct oxidative stress and also restore gut health. That's the first thing that I do. Any dog that has any health issue, that's the first thing. We don't even go into anything else until we fix that first. Hmm. And then I may, we use a lot of golden paste for joints, cancer, all types of issues. And then there's just triggering, you know, individual needs, just like, I may use a supplement on one dog that works and another dog it doesn't work. So I have to change yeah. it up. It's like kind of like training. <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. you're using a supplement that's working really great and then it stops working because, you know, the body is adjusting to it. Environment changes. Yeah. Things happen. So you change it up a little bit and try something new because really there, there could be, 10 supplements that do almost the same thing, but they have different components in them. And you just have to change it up. I mean, it's the same thing with humans with vitamins. You can't take the same thing every day forever and expect it to work. The body is going to adapt and yeah. adjust. Yeah. And I think that's important too. I, you know, when we look at it from a training perspective, I, I could take a certain dog and go do a one-on-one -on -one training session with it and do X, Y, and Z with it. I go get the next dog, go for another training session. X, Y, and Z does not work. Right. I, I, I've, I've got to adjust. I've got to kind of pivot in a different direction uh, because the personality can be different. Uh, the the situation can be different. The tool can be different. And I think that's important too. And it's it's kind of like, I mean, being a parent raising kids, I, you got a couple of different kids. They're not going to all eat the exact same thing and like all the exact same foods. Yeah. Uh, and I think that I think that's important, too, is that we have to learn to adjust. Uh, and definitely if something's not working, you really have to adjust. There's there's no there's no way about that. Yeah, that's that's correct. And there's so many different factors you have to take in consideration, just like with training environment. uh the, just the day-to-day -day weather yes. yep. <laughs> what can affect a dog. Uh, even the emotions and things going on in an, in an owner's house is going to affect a dog. Uh, dogs are really empathic. Um, they just pick up on things and it affects them. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest stressors out there are repeated vaccines. I'm not saying I'm against vaccines, not at all but it's just too much. Yeah. And over and over they've proven this, but a person can't take their dog to grooming if the dog isn't vaccinated or to daycare. So I think it's important to, if your dog does need to go through this is to be able to um, restore afterwards to be able to give the right supplements and the right foods to help them continue building their cells and just their overall nutrition. If not, their bodies start to break down just like ours. Yeah. And we get cancer. We have organ failure. I mean, being in the industry, you see lots of dogs with organ failure that are eight, nine years old. That's yeah. too young. And that's from oxidative stress. That's a big word. Uh, and not enough balance for the dog to heal itself through nutrition. And I'm, I'm pretty passionate about that. Yeah. Because I, I've seen it over the years. I've seen it. I've watched it. I've watched it change. I, I see dogs all the time that are deteriorating because of lack of nutrition, lack of enrichment, exercise, all of these things. So Jade has a good question. And, um, so she says, do you have a baseline recipe? And I'm, I'm guessing this is the million dollar question that you get is kind of like, where do I start? Oh, uh, okay. So I'm going to use the farm. Okay. Because, you know, we have 70 something dogs at a time. So, you know, we load up a cart. We have, we feed a can of origin. And then we use different varieties of that uh rotating proteins or whatever so 
Luckily, we have access to all of this wholesale. So we might change it up. We'll start with kibble. And then three days a week, they get a... I always try to use human-grade supplements. Okay. And the reason for that is, is because of purity. As soon as they slap a dog label on it, the price increases. Hmm. Uh, and there's no way to control the purity. So I, I was guessing probably the price increases and the quality goes down. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're playing on the sympathy of owners. So we try to buy proven good human grade supplements and then we adjust them for the dogs. So three days a week, I'll use a superfood. So Jade, I know you're wanting a recipe. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll start with we'll start with a good kibble like a can or origin. One day it may be duck and pear, another day it may be chicken or beef or whatever. Three days a week we'll add um, a product called Green Vibrance, which is a superfood for humans, been around forever. We do that three times a week because it is really high in nutrients. It doesn't need to be given more than that. And sometimes too many nutrients is, are bad for dogs. Yeah, I would guess. We use oils, sometimes coconut oil, sometimes hemp oil. Um, we recently got a new product in. I try to stay away from salmon oils because they go rancid. You know, it's a large fish, more subject to pollutants and things like that. So we try to stick with small fish like sardine oils, um, anchovies, things like that. So that's a new product that we kind of play around with a little bit. So I don't have enough info on that. We use another product daily, which is called plaque off. And this is a, this is a certain type of kelp. It's not just any type of kelp. Like people go and they buy bulk kelp. This is a, I think a Norwegian kelp. Okay. Um, it goes in the food just a small amount. It creates uh, an enzyme in their gut, which comes out in their saliva that helps remove tartar from their teeth. It, wow. it, it's an amazing product. I've used it for years. We also noticed that in doing this, we noticed it also helps skin, digestion. I mean, it's just a really mm. great product. Uh we add stuff. I mean, you know, we also add some canned foods that are premium canned foods. I don't just pick up dog food someplace. No, uh, no Alpo, right? <laughs> no, no Alpo. And this, you know, changes up the flavor. I mean, if a dog is excited about food and wants to eat, not just because they're hungry, that excitement will also create better digestion. Uh, so we'll maybe add that and moisture is important for dogs. For sure. I'm um, always been, I've always been a big proponent on people at least soaking the food if they've got a dry food that they're feeding. That's just, right. Especially in the summertime too, because dogs are hot, they're panting more. This is a great way to keep them hydrated more. Um, yeah, I, I've been a huge proponent of that. And I, I think it's extremely important. I mean, it is for us too. Uh, and we might as well think about our dogs the same way. If, you know, in a perfect world, we'd have the right grass fed raw with all the organs and <laughs> Olaf's and, the, you know, and be able to figure all this out. Yeah. Uh, and that's great if you can do that and you yep. can afford to do that. But going to, you know, the supermarket and buying poor quality meats uh, to feed your dog to me is not the solution. At the same time, is kibble perfect? No, but there's things that you can do to enhance their diet. I mean, if you look at the dogs at Dancing Creek Farm, they're amazingly healthy. Yeah. All of those dogs are on kibble. We just add stuff. Um, we add a little bit of premium wet. We add the supplements. If a dog has a particular need, because no dogs are the same, mm -hmm. has allergies or skin issues, we may add herbs and different supplements to be able to address those needs. Yeah. So here's a good question. We'll, and we'll wrap it up with this one because I've heard this one a lot. I actually heard this uh, for my, my Frenchie that uh, has the tear stains that, you know, we should give him vinegar. So 
Patricia says, do you believe in giving dogs apple cider vinegar in the raw cloudy version? Yes, absolutely. And we do, I didn't include it in our little recipe thing, Yep. but apple cider vinegar is amazing. It helps so many levels uh, for, I mean, we just use it as, I use it for my chickens, my pigs. It's myself, you know, I drink vinegar every day. It's absolutely amazing for every level of health. Um, and of course, raw is, is always going to be better. We usually keep like, um, you know, those, you put the salad dressings in the squeeze bottles. Yep. So we have one with our hemp oil, our coconut oil. We have one with apple cider vinegar, and I call it our doggy salad dressing. And which, you know, <laughs> we have an assembly of prep going on to feed 70 dogs. Oh, yeah. And yeah, apple cider vinegar, definitely. So you were going to ask me about your Frenchie. No, I'm saying I had heard this when I first started looking into the tear stain thing, and I had heard uh, that we should put the apple cider vinegar in her water. Uh, so she would drink that, which she did not. <laughs> as soon as that went in the water, she stopped drinking. She's like, I am not, I am not doing that whatsoever. So I had, I had heard this before the, with the vinegar. I haven't had success putting it in water <clears throat> and some dogs will turn their nose up at it. I mean, pigs, animals, some, some animals just don't like it. Mixing it with oil helps a lot. Uh, mixing it with other things. I mean, if you just stick it in front of a dog, a dog is just say, what the hell is this? You know, well, and it's, it's a strong scent to us. Can you only imagine what it is to them too? I mean, even, that's even, I have to like hold my nose, and... <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the benefits of it, but yeah, with, with, you know, it just helps balance out the system. So things collectively is what helps um, allergies, skin issues. I mean, there's just so many things. Yeah. Great. Well, this has been awesome, Tamara. Um, tell people where they can find the Dancing Creek Farm, where they can locate you, and then we'll mention the Facebook group again. Dancing Creek Farm is on Facebook. You just have to do a search for it. That's our board and train long-term boarding facility. We also do short-term boarding. Uh, Advanced Holistic Dog Nutrition has a page that's not quite as active as the group, uh, if you have any trouble, you can, there's a link, I believe on the page that goes to the group. That's more interactive where people can post, uh, about their dogs send pictures and we kind of follow up and kind of guide them, send them links, uh, and check in with them so they can keep us updated. Yep. Great. So thank you very much for this, Tamara. I think this is, uh, going to give a lot of people a lot of good information at least to get the ball rolling and that's one i one thing i find too is when it comes to health people just don't know where to start especially if they want to go from a kibble to a raw and sometimes that's a huge hurdle for people so i think this gives some people something to to go on like jade was asking as far as like a baseline recipe it just just get the ball rolling you don't have to make a humongous change from tonight until tomorrow I think little by little, and the more you learn about it, I think that's going to be more beneficial to everybody involved. And you, and you'll learn about it as you go. Oh, I just, I want to say one thing though, that, you know, I think raw is incredible. It is obviously the ideal diet if you're able to afford it and yep. able to do all of the things for the dog. If you can't and you still want to do raw, then farmer's dog pre-made, you know, things that are, proven i think farmer's dog is actually cooked but talk to one of us about a good pre-made diet that's right for your dog and that's the that's the way to get it going too and and that's what i did with my dogs is a couple years ago i just went pre-made just to not feel so overwhelmed and um but it still makes you feel like you're doing right by your dog so that pre-made is a good way to get your foot in the door i i agree 100 with that uh so anyways, Tamara, thank you again so much for being on here. Thank I'm you. sure we'll be in touch. And for those of you that want to learn more about this, jump on their Facebook uh, page, Advanced Holistic Dog Nutrition. It's their group. Tons of good information. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch, Tamara. But thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Ian.